In this video, I'm with the vision of providing and sharing closure and clarity on syntax and the five syntax scenarios as presented by Colin David Eifenwin Colin Miller. So to begin with, if someone were to ask you, hey, what is syntax? What would you say? Do you have closure on what that is? If you don't, you may find this video of value. So to begin with, I went to the fiction to see what they had to say about it. First thing I looked up on Google, I just looked up the word syntax. And Google told me that syntax is the arrangement of words and phrases to create well-formed sentences in a language. A set of rules for or an analysis of the syntax of a language. Next, I went to Webster's Dictionary. I think it was 1828 edition. And it says that syntax is a noun, comes from Latin syntaxis, together and to put. In grammar, the construction of sentences, according to the established usage. Syntax includes concord and regime. I'm sorry, regimen or the agreement and government of words. Words in every language have certain connections and relations as verbs and adjectives with nouns, which relations must be observed in the formation of sentences. A gross violation of the rules of syntax is a solecism. It's also a connected system or order, union of things. And then I looked up some synonyms for syntax. We have arrangement, order, pattern, structure, system. Now that we've established a base of knowledge with which to proceed from, I'm going to go into some deeper closures on syntax. Welcome to the parse section of this video. I got this from etymologyonline.com. So syntax is to put in order a grammatical arrangement. S-Y-N means together with. Tax, which I'm sure everyone's familiar with, comes from tactics and it has a military connotation. It comes from the Proto-Indo-European root tag, to touch. So syntax, we could reasonably say using fiction babble, syntax is with the tactics of grammatical order and arrangement, and that is parse. Here is the finite meaning of the word syntax as it exists in my co-dictionary, which governs my construct. For the syntax of this finite meaning is with the claim of this contract with the math paragon model of these conveyances with this certification by the contract terms. Backwards, for the contract terms of this certification are with these conveyances of the math paragon model with this contract of the claim with this finite mean by the syntax. So we have a cause, which is the syntax, what is the cause concerned with this finite me? If we have our two points, we can draw a straight line. Cause, concern, now we drop our verb of the thinking in. Singular, because the cause is singular. We have the possessive with the claim. What is the claim concerned with of this contract? The other possessive, the math paragon. Now I use this word paragon because model is no contract, MO is movement, it's no contract. So Math Paragon is concerned with the conveyances possessing what? The certification and the authority of the certification is by the contract terms, the syntax. Flip it backwards, the cause is the contract terms. What are the contract terms concerned with? Certification. Now we put our verb in, which would be plural, are, because the cause Going backwards is contract terms, 
plural. R, with these conveyances, what are the conveyances concerned with? The math paragon. Of the math paragon, with the contract possessive, what is the contract concerned with? Of the claim, possessive, with this finite mean, and what is the authority of the finite mean? By the syntax. As you can see from this screenshot taken from one of Colon David Eiffel Wayne Colon Miller's seminars, there are five syntax scenarios on his uh, board there. We have a 1 2 scenario, a 1 3 4 scenario, 3 4 scenario, 4 1 2 scenario, 4 1 3 4 scenario. I will leave a link in the description to the video and timestamp of where you can find this information. In the correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, technology, there are nine syntax values. Adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, positional, lodial, fact, past tense, future tense, and of course, the conjunction, which holds a neutral value of zero. In the fiction, one would use adjective, adverb, pronoun, past tense, future tense, and the conjunction. As you saw in the previous screenshot from Colin David Eiffel Wynn Colin Miller's seminar, there are five basic syntax scenarios. You have the one, two, which is adverb, verb. You have one, three, four, which is adverb, adjective, pronoun. 334, which is adjective, adjective, pronoun. And this one actually, if you have a procession of tangible contract words, each tangible fact based word is going to be a 33333, three, 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 and then the final one is going to be a 4. It doesn't matter how many there are. Whether there's 2, a 3, 4, or whether there's 5, 33334, three, 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 it's adjective, adjective, pronoun. Then you have a 412, which is pronoun, adverb, verb, and then a 4134, which is pronoun, adverb, adjective, pronoun. Now, I've given closure as to what an adverb is, what a verb is, so on and so forth. Uh, in a video I released earlier this year, I will leave a link to that up there. One thing I would like to point out, nowhere in these scenarios does a one ever come next to a one? You will never see a one side by side with a one, just like here. Like, you have two adjectives together, I don't see a one and a one next to one another here. I'm not saying it's not correct to do that, I'm saying I don't have closure on it, and I know Colon David has mentioned these five scenarios in multiple videos. I've never heard him mention six scenarios, or seven, only five, and in these scenarios that I have closure on, I have never seen a one next to a one, an adverb following an adverb. So therefore, I don't teach it and I don't use it. When you have a syntax scenario, or a sentence, it will never end on an adverb and it will never end on an adjective. And the reason for that is those are modifiers. And if it, you've come to the end of a word group, there's nothing left to modify. So the syntax scenarios would either end on a four or a two, as you see here and in the screenshot uh, with Cole and David uh, before this section. I created this sentence to demonstrate to you the five syntax scenarios as laid out by Cole and David Eiffel and Cole and Miller in the screenshot earlier in this video and according to the closures I gave you in the last section of the video. So I'm going to syntax this. We got adjective pronoun, adverb, adjective pronoun, adverb verb, adverb verb, adverb adjective pronoun, adverb adjective pronoun. Now, do you, as the viewer, see the five syntax scenarios in there. 
and how they work. I'll just mark one right here. I see the 3, 4. I also see a 1, 3, 4. I see a 1, 2, 1, 2. I also see a 4, 1, 3, 4. So how many is that? 1, 2, 3, 4. We're missing one. It's hiding in there. Which one are we missing? We have the 3, 4, the 1, 3, 4, the 1, 2, 1, 2, the 4, 1, 3, 4. We need a 4, 1, 2. There's a 4, 1, 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. You see it. One more time. Adjective, pronoun, that's one. Ad adverb, adjective, pronoun, that's two. Pronoun, adverb, verb, that's three. Adverb, verb, adverb, verb, that's four. And then pronoun, adverb, adjective, pronoun, that's five. The five syntax scenarios. Again, I stress, Nowhere in those five syntax scenarios do I see space to put a one next to a one because all syntax scenarios either end on a two or a four. I'm not saying that's not correct. I'm saying I don't use it or teach it because I have never gotten any closure on that in any video that's out there. So therefore, I only teach what I know and I have closure on and I have 100% closure on this. Figured I'd bring the video back outside to provide a more peaceful and calm and natural aura for the closing of the video. For those of you who are curious about syntax closures and why I banked the syntax values I did in that example sentence, well, I have a specific syntax playlist on my YouTube channel, which you're watching a video from right now. You can just check out my YouTube channel. The, new, the knowledge is, is all there for you in the public uh, if you're interested in that. If you have grammar questions or if you're interested in learning this on a deeper level, you can contact me in the confidential at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com and uh, we can set up a video consultation, 10 to 15 minutes, to give closure on our volitions and our identities and our correct names. As for the statement I made about the not having closure on one adverb coming in front of another adverb and another adverb, um, again, for the third time I will stress, I am not saying that that's not correct. What I'm saying is I don't see a possibility for it using colon David's five syntax scenarios Therefore, I don't have closure on it. I don't teach it. The syntax mechanics that I teach, I have personally been 100% successful with because I have closure on it. Anyone who wants to learn this, feel free. Have a great day.